자. 아, oh, hey guys. I was just putting some finishing touches on a new coat of paint in one of my rooms. It's not easy work, but it is my house and I want to take care of it. I'm a pretty good painter for the most part, and I've always liked to paint, even when I was little, like five years old. I remember my parents painting some rooms in our house and I wanted to help, but they weren't going to trust a five-year-old with paint around their carpeting and their furniture. I mean, who would? So they started me out small. They gave me a small paintbrush and a project to paint. And when I got really good at that and didn't get paint all over the place, then they let me paint some trim around a window. And when I got really good at that, then they let me pick up a roller and a bigger paintbrush and help them paint the actual walls. And I got to climb the ladder, which was really cool at five years old. You see, they started me out with something small. And when I showed that I could be faithful with something small, then they gave me something bigger because I had proven that I could do it with something small. Have you ever been given work to do and you kind of were a little lazy about it and kind of did a half-baked job about it? Or has your teacher at school or at church ever asked you to help, but you didn't really follow through? Well, what does that say to them? Yep, it says that they probably can't trust you with something more important. So we're going to learn about that today in our Bible story. And I hope you're going to diligently listen because today's lesson is not only something you can use now when you're young, but something when you get older. So let's go and do our worship and give our praise to God. And I'm going to go get this pain off my face.
Hey, John. Are you ready to play Hasbro's classic board game, Mousetrap? Oh. <laughs> what are you doing, John? Waiting for you. Why? Mousetrap. That's right. <laughs> Hasbro's classic board game, Mousetrap. I've got it right here. What is this? Cheese. Cheese? Uh-huh. Why? Mousetrap. What are you doing leaving cheese out here, man? <laughs> How many did you even put out here? One, two, three, four, five, six? Ah. Mousetrap. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Mmm. Oh, mousetrap. Get out here. Mousetrap. Mousetrap. Mouse leaving cheese mouse outside. Trap. He's trapping mouse me. Trap. You kidding me? Trip on mousetrap. Mousetrap. Get over here. That's a mousetrap. That's a trap for a mouse. Ah. Mousetrap. <laughs> Mouse trap. Hello, I'm John and I'm Stephen and this is the so and so show. Pause. Pause. Okay, we have to explain what's happening here. Right, this is the so-and-so show. Yeah, the show where we have fun. Laugh a lot. And try to learn something new. Especially something about God. And today, we're in the middle of a little competition. Yes, sir, e Bob. Yeah, it's John. Usually, people have competitions to see who can run the most laps or do the most push-ups or lift the most weight. But we're trying to see which one of us can do the least. I am totally going to put in less effort than you. Not a chance. Unpause. It's time for the underachiever. Championship. The Underachiever Championship. May the worst man win. Indeed, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Tiniest jump. On your mark, get set, go. <sighs> One point, Steven. Yes! What? No way. I want to see a replay. Oh, fair enough. Most mm. quiet scream. On your mark, get set, scream. One point, John. Yes. Oh, come on! What? He's never quiet. What are you talking about? You're not. Lightest feather blow. I've been waiting for this one. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. On your mark, get set, blow. Oh, come on. <laughs> on the... Oh, I think yo, you're a whole five inches away. Oh, and I'm negative two inches. Five... Two Hold points, up. John. Boom! What's Rat. next? Softest pillow hit. You ready? Uh, yeah. First dibs. Okay. Uh... Oh, oh that's, beat that's pretty that. soft. Uh, yeah. Oh! Two points, Stephen. Hey, that's my line. Sorry. Slowest soup slur. Mm. All right. Ooh, soup. <sighs> Stephen wins. <laughs> Ha! I beat you. I ran out of air. Yeah, well, I didn't. <laughs> wow, I feel like I really didn't accomplish much at all. Yeah, me neither. But you know what? Soup was good, though. Yeah? Yeah. Hey, I know something we could accomplish. What? It's Bible Story Time with Kellen! Woohoo! Hey, fellas, what's up? Slow soup slurping, Kellen. And jumping as low as possible. Steven won. That's right. Then congrats? Sure. So, today I want to share some wisdom written by the very wise King Solomon. You can find a lot of his thoughts in the book of Proverbs. It's made up of many ancient teachings that are still helpful today. Here's what he wrote. You people who don't want to work, think about the ant. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, it has no leader or ruler, but it stores up its food in summer. 
It gathers its food at harvest time. Some translations of the Bible call the people who don't want to work sluggards. That's why some people call this proverb the ant and the sluggard. <laughs> Sounds like a sitcom. Anyway, no, no way. I wonder what's on the telly tonight. Hmm. Hmm. But the remote is way over there. Oh, I guess I gotta reach for it. Oh, this is way too much work. <laughs> Oh, bother! <laughs> oh, somebody's at the door. Guess I'm gonna have to get up and find out who it is. Oh, bother! No worries, my dear friend Slug. I can let myself in. Boof! <laughs> You just open the door all by yourself. Mm -hmm. oh, I got tired just thinking about it. I just want to check in with you, Slug. Winter's almost here. Have you done any work? <sighs> Who needs work? It's too much work. Well, me and the other ants have worked really hard and prepared more than enough. I'd be happy to share some of our food with you. <sighs> just, just leave me alone. All this talk about work, and it's making me work too hard, trying not to think about work. Oh, bother. <sighs> okay, sir. Well, I'll see you in the spring. In the spring? I hope. The spring? Oh, bother. <laughs> Yeah, that was... The slug doesn't really do much, right? And the ant is the better example. And it's because the ant works hard to prepare for the winter and doesn't wait around for someone to tell them when it's time to work. And we all know it's better to work hard like the ant. But let's be honest. We all want to be like the slug. We just want to... Uh, lie around avoiding hard work because, well, because work is hard, right? But there are so many benefits to working hard and trying your best. That's right. For one thing, it just feels good to know that you've accomplished something. True. And working hard now can save you some work later. Plus, you can help other people when you work hard. That's right. You can help me right now by handing me the remote. Uh, uh, think about this. Work is something that God created us to do. He gave us hands and feet and creativity so that we can get things done. And when we work hard and when we do our best, it's a cool way to honor God. So maybe slurping soup really slow is, I don't know, kind of a waste of time. Yeah. Probably, but don't get me wrong. Choosing to work hard doesn't mean you can't rest and have fun every once in a while. God created fun for us too. Awesome. Thanks, Kellen. Ah, you're welcome, man. See you next time, Kellen. Yep, bye. You know, John, I think we learned a valuable lesson today. I think we learned another rule for life. Work hard. Good idea. Although we did spend most of the day working really hard at not working hard. Yeah. Well, hey, you know what? Let's make up for it right now, working extra hard on this next part, okay? Okay, go! Reveal the question! Whew, that was a little too hard. 
Yeah. When have you had to work hard? I uh, I think I work pretty hard on this show. Yeah, I don't think people realize how much effort goes into making this show happen. Yeah, but it's worth it. I think so. Yeah. And I hope they do too. Oh yeah, hey, you know what? It's your turn to answer. Talk about a time you had to work hard. Was it worth it? And we'll be back here hard at work next week on The, the So and So Show! Stop.